Hello and welcome back to another Pat Reports. Today is Wednesday the 29th of January 2020 and today we're starting by making up for a balls up I made yesterday. Yesterday I said there were two updates, but there was only one. Dummy, I know. But let's not dwell on the past too much and let's move on with today's roundup of thought-provoking news. To start, let's head on over to Gwent Police again. Now we covered them yesterday, twice, and it seems there is more incompetence from the Welsh Police Force. By the way, incompetence isn't my description of them. That's what Judge Daniel Williams at Newport Crown Court used to describe the force after it took them 13 months to file their case with the CPS, only to have it rejected for further inquiries and a further 15 months to get the case to court over Rhys Lloyd, who was caught with 400 grams of amphetamine in his car and despite him immediately admitting the drugs were his. Prosecutor Stephen Donoghue told how the defendant was stopped by police on July 29, 2017, after he was spotted driving a Honda erratically. And although the drugs were found on one of his passengers, Lloyd admitted that the drugs belonged to him. He also had a mobile phone with drug-related messages on it. Mr Donoghue tried to explain to Judge Daniel Williams why the matter had taken two and a half years to come to court. To this, the judge replied, it wasn't enough, was it, that he had 400 grams of speed in his car? He added, the prosecution of this case has been lamentable. When you read of a police officer boasting about how thorough his statement is, it's hard to bear. Perhaps they won't be so inclined to be so smug in future. <laughs> Lloyd, 30, pleaded guilty to possessing amphetamine with, imply to, with intent to supply. When Judge Williams said that he would be imposing a short suspended jail sentence, Lloyd's barrister Julia Cox said there was no need for her to offer mitigation to the court. Judge Williams told Lloyd the unconscionable delay in this case wasn't your fault. It was down to the incompetence of the police and the CPS. Lloyd was jailed for 12 weeks, suspended for 12 months and ordered to pay a £115 surcharge. As you can imagine, when leaving court, Lloyd and a woman were seen laughing to each other. In fact, Judge Williams told Mr Donoghue, the prosecutor, they were actually laughing as they left court, and I don't blame them. On the 3rd of February, a former special police constable will face a special case misconduct hearing in Lincolnshire. Former special constable Scott Wilson is alleged to have breached standards of professional behaviour by way of discreditable conduct. The allegations are that on the 29th of September 2019, whilst off duty, during an argument with another person, he prevented them from leaving his house, forcing them to remain with him. That sometime between the 1st of August 2019 and 29th of September 2019, whilst off duty, he assaulted another person by pushing them. That on the 14th of October 2019, he received a simple adult caution for the common assault. Now, that's all I have, and I will bring you an update to this as and when it comes through. West Yorkshire Police have been under the cosh once again this week as an inquiry into the death of 21-year-old Jamie Smith concluded. Jamie died on the 30th of April 2018 while his passenger survived with minor injuries after what police called the making off of Jamie after he spotted them turning around to follow him. Mr Smith was behind the wheel of a BMW 335D when he lost control on Black Road at Heath Common late evening on April 30th, 2018. Not wearing a seatbelt, he was thrown from the vehicle through the driver's side window. Minutes earlier, the marked police car, also a BMW, had passed his car on Normanton Bypass and turned around to follow him. The inquest was told that Jamie Smith had been to pick up his best friend Lewis Charlesworth from the police station at Normanton that night and the pair were heading towards Wakefield when the incident began to unfold. Mr Charlesworth told the inquest that they had been heading along the road and said only when Jamie saw the police car on the other side of the road and heading in the opposite direction that he sped up. He said he asked why Jamie was speeding up and he told him that he had two bald back tyres, inferring that he didn't want to be pulled over. Mr Charlesworth then told the inquest that he looked through the back window and saw the police car had in fact turned round and was pursuing them at speed, although they did not have their blue lights on. He admitted he was frightened at the speed they were travelling, which he estimated was at least 100 miles an hour, and told Jamie to chill out, meaning he wanted him to slow down. 
Seconds later, the car lost control, hit a curb and flipped over, colliding with bollards and a boulder before coming to rest in the road close to the old horse and groom pub. Now, the issue here is more than just someone making off from police over two bald tires. It was alleged by West Yorkshire Police after the incident that £2,000 worth of cocaine was found in a vehicle, a claim that Jamie's father denies and insists that the drugs were planted. The inquest at Wakefield Coroner's Court heard from Jamie's father, Paul Smith, and Lewis Charlesworth, the passenger. Shortly after being told of the tragic news of his son's death, Paul says he asked an officer if Jamie was being chased by the police at the time, to which he says he was told no. Although it appears that, upon review, seems he was in fact being pursued, pursued by a marked car. He also says that he wanted to see the video footage taken from the marked car, but, but says he was initially told it didn't exist, only for it to transpire later that it did exist. Strange that the police would lie about video evidence, isn't it? Mr Smith then told the hearing that the video shows officers carrying illegal searches of the car. Wakefield senior coroner Kevin McLaughlin then asked if he was suggesting that the drugs found were planted in the car. Mr Smith replied yes. He added that his son was brought up to know the dangers of drugs but did admit that they had experimented with steroids. When questioned, Lewis Charlesworth said there had been no conversation about drugs and said they had not belonged to him because he had been in the police station that evening where he had been searched. When Mr McLaughlin asked PC Wilson about the claim the drugs were planted, he replied, I certainly didn't see anyone. I do not understand. A. Where would we get that? And B. Why would we do it? There's no truth in it at all. Now let's get something clear here. Unless you're an absolute idiot, you don't go anywhere near a farm with any gear on you. Especially two grand's worth of beak. Police love nothing more than a potential easy collar. Picking on someone who's driving to pick up a friend from a police station is an easy target. And I've seen it myself many, many times. Not that I'm making assumptions about West Yorkshire Police or Jamie, just trying to be impartial. Now the inquest jury found the involvement of the police car contributed to Jamie's own actions which contributed to his death. In a narrative conclusion the jury found or believed that Jamie Smith knew there were drugs in the car which is why he tried to flee. Although in my experience people run from the police for far far less. And even though the jury came to a conclusion it's still unclear at the moment what will follow, as in whether Paul Smith, Jamie's father, will follow up with any further action against the police force, or whether there is any disciplinary outcome for West Yorkshire Police. If I do hear of any further updates to this, I will of course update you in future PAP reports. Now if one report about West Yorkshire Police wasn't enough, today we have a second. These guys just love the attention. PC Dean Wollstonecroft, formerly of West Yorkshire Police, has been sacked after a misconduct hearing found him guilty of gross misconduct after assaulting his then partner, also a serving police constable for the force, six times over an eight year period, including putting her in a headlock when she was eight months pregnant. Nice guy. The gross misconduct was as a result of being found to have breached the standards of professional behavior in relation to discreditable conduct and authority, respect and courtesy, during a misconduct hearing at the forces, headquarters in Wakefield and dismissed without notice. Wollstonecroft's former partner described how he had attacked her on several occasions, including when she was pregnant and a previous time when he threw a cigarette lighter at her face, causing her a serious eye injury which resulted in hospital treatment. Although all of Wollstonecroft's former partner's claims were argued against by his defence, including why she had not reported the assaults earlier, the hearing was told that, I didn't want to give a statement and I didn't want to go to court, but this is about my beliefs as a police officer. How can I continue to help victims of domestic violence if I don't report it myself? Obviously, Wollstonecroft denied all of the allegations against him, but gross misconduct was proven. PC Paul Fortune, one of Avon and Somerset's finest, who, by the way, saved a young boy's life who was choking on a 2p coin in 2015 and even ended up on a TV show this morning over the incident, has found himself in the limelight once again. 
Unfortunately, a turn of fortune for fortune, see what I did there, has meant he was the centre of a misconduct here in this time at Avon and Somerset's Police Portishead headquarters over claims of sexual harassment. The misconduct hearing heard how he told a member of uh, police staff, I have a really high sex drive and redacted. So if you are ever in need of a partner, let me know. When she made it clear she was not interested, PC Fortune told her, are you saying I'm fat and ugly? And also said to her, what time are you finishing tonight? I can come round to yours after work if you fancy. Although I don't, personally, I don't see anything specifically sexual about that last statement in itself. The woman complained to a sergeant in February 2019 when PC Fortune massaged her shoulders without permission. Ooh, naughty boy. Fortune was said to have also made comments to another female member of police staff, including, has redacted, touched your special bits. I never touch your special bits when I worked with you. The woman said she felt uncomfortable when he accidentally squirted some hand sanitizer onto her arm. Peter Cadman, chairing the misconduct panel said, the panel looked at the seriousness of the proven matters. None of them were individually found to be gross misconduct, but cumulatively they were. They took place over an extended period of time and were in a background of a more senior officer towards junior officers. On the other hand, both junior officers had positive things to say about PC Fortune. Proven allegations of this nature normally give rise to dismissal without notice. This is the unusual case where a final written warning for such proven matters is actually appropriate and proportionate. I don't know. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. Let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.